thanks. So we are online. We are online with the Dragon's Den Roasting. Good afternoon and welcome to it. This Dragon's Den Roasting session, uh, dear people, is organized by the accelerator and coaching team of the European Innovation Council. Uh, the purpose of the session is to um, provide insights in how investors perceive and judge pitching applicants for funding. Uh, we have our last pitcher entering the room. Um, two pitches for investment are going to be given here to a panel of four different investors. They will introduce themselves a bit later on. Um, the first pitch will be from Jean-Francois Perrin from the company Nanomakers. And the second pitch is from Céline, Céline saint olive back from Noraker company. So during the Q&A that comes after these five minute pitches, um, maybe I can show you the agenda on the next slide. During the Q&A, um, the panel will challenge these pitches and actually uh, some of the panel might present the pitcher with an offer to cooperate. That is what we hope for. If the pitch is good enough, it might go in that direction. Well, to introduce all this, um, we will give the floor to Jose Martinez. He's one of our VCs in the panel, and he will present some views on how investors regard the readiness and the credibility of people seeking funds. And Jose, I'll try to open your um, PowerPoint for you which is yep. here, and I give you the floor, if that works. I guess you can control it, Jose, uh, thanks, fire away. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jasper, and uh, welcome everybody. Well, my name is Jose Martinez. I, I, I work as a coach in the European Union. I'm, I'm partner of a small VC, and I'm the CEO of an artificial intelligence company. Too. And I will try to give you some ideas uh, about the process of investing. And we typically talk about readiness, and uh, this is made of three parts of readiness. One is that we must be technology ready. Second is we must be business or commercial uh, ready, and then investment ready. And when you, um, to say that you are uh, technology ready, you need to present a technical product, which is made of features, uh, different versions, cost of production, and so on. And to show the, um, that your technical product is really ready and make it credible, you can present lab tests, uh, some testing, you have a number of beta users, you have done some clinical trials, or you have written some articles, and so on and so on. When we are talking about the business readiness, typically you offer a commercial product, which is made of uh, some price. You, you can you control the delivery time. Oops, the slides disappear. Yeah, uh, the, the delivery time. Your product uh, brings some benefits to customers. And to show the credibility of your readiness, you many times have some brochures you present case studies so you can bring uh, customer referrals or you appear in some competitive reports and finally to ensure that you are investment uh, ready you need to present a different product which is a financial product for investors and this is made of a surprise an enterprise valuation and you bring you give me a percentage of shares you can tell me the use of funds, of my funds that I will invest. You can share with me your exit strategy for my money and the return on my investment. And to, to again, to show the credibility that you are ready, you will, you will present different things such as the business plan, your financial statements, that you, you have some IP rights, you will show a strong team, or you will share the corporate governance in your company. And these three things can, can come in different order. Sometimes uh, the technology, you, 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 you build the technology first, then you are uh, commercially ready second, and then you look for an investment to grow. Oops, again, my, 
the slides disappear, I don't know why. Uh, and then the, the, the investor profile is typically a growth VC or a corporate VC. But there could be another order. There could be uh, uh, first the, the, um, the, the technology readiness. You have some technology, but you cannot go to the, to the market uh, yet because, for example, you need the CE mark or you need some clinical trials. And then you, you ask for some investment in the second place. And then uh, typical investor profiles are business uh, angel networks or seed investors or early stage VCs. And then once you have the investment, you can go to the market. And the third order is that even before that, uh, uh, even before of having your technology ready, you ask uh, for money first. And then you, you ask for the money, you build your technology, you go to the market. In this case, the investor profile is typically uh, friends, fools, and family, or business uh, angels again, or pre-seed venture capitals. In most of the cases, this is a process that lasts between six and 12 months on average. And it, start, it starts with, uh, as, we said, as we saw, the business uh, or investment readiness. Then you look for investors. Then you get a term sheet of some of, from some of them. Then you uh, have a due diligence process with uh, investors very interested. And finally, you get an agreement with one investor or some co-investors. Some co in, uh, in, but uh, let's say this is not as flat as in this image. Really, you need to put a lot of uh, investors in the funnel. So you get some term sheets and at least one due diligence and try to get a final agreement with one of them. But this is really a funnel and you need to do a lot of effort on searching for investors and following this process one by one. And typically investors are bigger companies or they have, uh, they, they show they have the power because they have the money. And my advice is even you are a small company uh, don't assume that you are teeny and you don't have any negotiation power because you can try to put investors in competition too and you can try to leverage a little bit on your position. And even the last thing is in all these processes, there could be two values. One is the fair value of the company and the second one is the market value of the company. In many cases, those two values will uh, will be balanced, will be equal, but in some others, the fair value of the company could be much smaller than the market value. If you look at the right, I'm not sure if you have the chance to see it, to see them, but this is the value of uh, football players. And in some occasions, the market value of some football players is much, much higher than their fair value because uh, they have some... Uh, uh they are needed in some teams for the for the because they sell even t-shirts so market value and fair value are not always in the same position and that's all uh, let's talk about your financial product in these two cases we have and uh, we'll do some role role plays with them i hope everybody listen will learn not only the the pitchers here uh, jean francois and celine and uh, well, we have four, uh, four investors with different roles uh, that will or may change from the first uh, pitch to the second pitch. And we'll try to simulate different profiles in the, in the investment. And we'll ask you things to challenge uh, your, pro your financial product. Thank you very much. So Jasper, I think Jean-Francois is, is the following one. Yeah, wait. A second, Jose, you're right. Thank you very much. You're actually quite fast. Um, we are a bit ahead of time already. So, um, Jean Francois, you will be on, on screen in a few minutes from now. But first, I would like to give our four investors the opportunity to introduce themselves, let's say, in one minute each, so that our pitchers know at least who they are talking to, what kind of people we have in, in the panel. Um, who is going to start there? Maybe you yourself, Jose, and then we hand it over to Angel and Martin and Unai. Okay, well, thank you. Um, 
Uh, my role as investor has two profiles. One is uh, I'm um, a business angel uh, myself uh, that enters into very early stage in very small companies. And I, I collaborate with a, a VC uh, who's working with uh, tech transfer companies, uh, more in the R&D and in the uh, early stage uh, process of uh, small companies in different uh, in different sectors but mainly in health and it okay and that was it that was fast you looked at your clock right angel who are you okay so hello everyone i'm angel giuliano uh, i'm an entrepreneur and now also a business angel and through my work over the years, I've done a lot of different projects and work, especially with regional development agencies. So today my role is going to be um, of a regional development bank or a development agency, even national, um, because they're a different type of investor. And maybe um, some of you in the audience have never come across this as an option. So it would be good also to learn something new. Okay, that's a nice and precise entry. Martin, I see you have unmu unmuted your mic. Take In expectation forward. to take over for the next introduction. Yeah. My name is Martin Tyer. As you can hear, I'm Austrian. I'm tax advisor. I'm advising very interesting people, high individual rich people. They are entrepreneurs, got a lot of money and want to invest in innovative companies like yours. But they are hard people to convince that this is a good story. So they come to me as PKF and ask me for my opinion. And if I say yes, maybe you have good chances to get money. And if I say no, you have no chances to get money. So let's see how big your chances are today. Ah, you're playing the tough guy already. Well, our uh, last, um, I think sometimes you're the corporate VC, right, Unai? This guy represents yes. a big company in Spain, as we can hear. Go ahead. Yes, um, I will be playing that role. But before that, just fast presentation. I'm a founding partner of Haston Ventures. That we do, uh, we are a venture builder. So we build companies based on science and technology. And we have a small investment vehicle for seed funding where people don't get the funding from Martin Tayer's uh, <laughs> decision making. And again, I will be playing. So uh, coming back to my uh, business history, I will be playing the corporate, the big player that wants to take uh, take advantage of your the, the smart people coming out from uh, startups. OK, um, sometimes I see something in the screen that that well, let's if if somebody feels that he's not heard, speak out. Um, so this is bringing us, after all these introductions, we know now what the investors are going to look at, dear presenters, and we know who they are. So I think it is now the turn to Jean-Francois to, uh, to try and kick it off. I will uh, try and put his slides on the screen, which are these, as far as I can see. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. And... Um, you can fire it away, Jean-Francois. Um, the floor is yours. Take your time. OK. So uh, yeah, I take my time, but I've got five minutes only, huh? if I remember yeah. right. Um, um, if you take six, I'm I'm OK, huh? Yeah. <laughs> OK, I'm start. Uh, OK, so Jean-Francois Perrin, I'm the CEO of uh, Nanomakers. Uh, Nanomakers. Uh, uh, yes, so I have to answer to the poll also. Uh, do it later. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, I, I received a, I received a poll a question from the poll to answer, and so it was a bit uh, complicated. So nanomakers, uh, as our name uh, stands, so we uh, we make nano. We not only make, but we also design the the nano materials we uh, we produce. And uh, so our nanomaterials, uh, they are patented, which is quite important to uh, uh, to 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 give a good uh, to get a good idea of the value of the company. Uh, and uh, so our nanomaterials are mostly uh, additives, which are used as material boosters uh, to uh, to enable uh, our customers who are chemists 
big, big chemists uh, to disrupt their competitor with uh, brand new uh, products. Our history, uh, so uh, innovation uh, is from the beginning. So we, uh, we, are, we have an exclusive license from CEA investigation center in France, a uh, big investiga investigation center uh, for the laser pyrosis, which is the technology we use. And uh, and after this, uh, the foundation of the company in 2010, so we, we went on innovating and uh, we applied, we filed uh, several uh, several patents uh, for new materials, for new applications, because application is, uh, is key for us. And, uh, and we started our plant, we started up our plant in 2012, and so we have uh, now eight years uh, experience in production. So our, our future and uh, our applications, uh, for our applications, we are standing on two legs. Uh, one leg, uh, the left one is a semiconductor, and uh, semiconductor, so for us, it's a very profitable business. Uh, the first application for which we sell uh, industrial quantities since 2015 uh, is to uh, to improve the quality of the uh, seals which are used in uh, etching reactors uh, to produce semiconductors. And uh, and so it's uh, regularly increasing. Uh, so it's marketed since, uh, since 2015. And we have no competitor for that. That's why it's quite profitable. Uh, for the semiconductor, we are developing also, thanks to the quality of our product, which is a very high priority, uh, new applications that will be uh, marketed uh, next year. And we are at the stage of the scale up. So we can we can produce a uh, uh, part like this. And our target is to produce a part like this, if you see it. Our second leg. Uh, so our second leg is uh, so mass production. It's for the battery. So one of our product, which is silicon, is used to uh, increase the autonomy uh, by increasing the density, the autonomy of vehicles, for instance, but also smartphones or any application, drones, so and so on. And uh, uh, so uh, it's it's used to increase the autonomy uh, by increasing the capacity to store more energy. And we are at the final of qualification stage with uh, some of our first uh, first customers. Um, uh, so we have uh, we 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 have a strong position because we we are in contact with most of our world leaders. Uh, Ninety nine percent of our turnover is uh, is made outside of Europe, and uh, we are uh, industrially uh, ready. So we started in 2020 and we have improved year after year uh, our capacity and we can uh, uh, scratch from now, uh, produce uh, big quantities of product that will be uh, required for the battery business. Um, our team, so a dream team. Uh, okay, I'm very proud of, uh, of, of our team. Uh, so we have 14 people. Uh, we have the priority, agenda priority. Uh, half of uh, our, our staff is born, uh, was born out of France, so a small world company, as I said, uh, quite young, so except me. And uh, almost half of the, of the people uh, have a PhD, so a high, high competency. And uh, even in the, in the managing staff, so our CEO has a lot of experience uh, in, uh, in Continental, so a T1 automotive supplier. So very good, uh, uh, very good uh, toolbox uh, for operations, efficient operations and, uh, and continuous improvement. Our CTO uh, has already worked in a, in a mining company as R&D uh, manager, and he joined us uh, some years ago. And uh, for me, so I'm um, so leading the company and also in charge of finance and business development. So I've uh, before uh, worked in a startup and uh, before that in a large group and uh, small companies. So dream team, as I said. Up. Next, uh, so this is just an example, a track record, how we develop to our first application. and. But uh, when we are on the track uh, and uh, when we reach uh, the, the end of the track, so we are in a very strong position. As I said in this first application, we have no competition. And, uh, so it's quite profitable. And, uh, and so finally, uh, almost finally, so our final model is to, to go on developing our activity here in Rambouillet. And after, for the, uh, on the right, uh, for, for the battery business where the quantity is uh, huge, uh, so we know that we can uh, we cannot develop uh, quickly 
the big plants which are required uh, by the cell makers, battery makers, and uh, for this, so we have already started to uh, to develop projects uh, to build big plants with industrial partners. And uh, for this, if we want to be able to follow and uh, and to keep the control uh, of these operations, we need cash to invest in big plants uh, in a joint venture with uh, these industrial partners. Okay, so I'm. I'm waiting for your questions now. Thanks for your attention. Oh, I'm finished, yeah? Huh? It's, it's... You are. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> very well done, Jean-Francois. Thank you very much, very much. Um, and actually, quite nice in time, eh? so no worries there. Um, I see that uh, at least one or two of our um, panel members have switched on their microphone and I invite, I think you have a sort of a logic who's going to ask a question first. I invite you to uh, kick it off guys. Um, your 15 minutes of fame is starting now. So Martin. Thank you very much. So jean thank you very much for the interesting insights. However, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed, you know, if you have done your homework correctly, you would have seen that Hermann Hauser is part of my clients. Hermann is, is arm. He likes to invest in these kind of things, but you know, I'm missing fundamental information on your pitch. I think to switch a business model from high, low, let's say high pricing, low quantity to a mass production and to invest into assets is something Hermann doesn't like. He is very famous for asset light. So, I'm not 100% sure what you're asking for. Do you need a project financer to build plants, bricks? Are you asking for an investor to grow internationally? You say you're already in the business for 12 years. I would assume you have enough cash flow to finance your operational and working capital. So I'm a little bit confused about your positioning and your pitch. What are you asking for? What do you need me for? And why should I give you money and how do you spend the money, you know, to employ value for me? This is all not clear to me. Sorry, Jean-Francois. Okay. No, it's, uh, it was a bit short. Yeah. Um, so we, we are, industrially, we are ready. Technically, we are ready. Uh, we have the staff, but now we'll, uh, we'll need uh, to, uh, to accelerate and to switch, you're right, from a highly profitable uh, and small business, niche business, uh, to a big one. Uh, for this reason, we, we won't be managing the future plant, the future development and a plant, because we know that uh, building a plant, uh, so you need uh, to, to, to know, to, to know the, the country, the regulation of the country where you are building the plant. You need a supply chain, a big one. Uh, supply chain you need to uh, to train the staff and to uh, to put it in place to recruit before and so on and so this will be in the hands of our industrial partner so we we know that we we are not ready to uh, uh, to 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 build the big plants uh, by ourselves so this will be in the hand of our partner but we want to keep the control and to keep the control uh, so our idea is to build a joint venture and to keep the control, so uh, we, we need uh, we need to have uh, uh, at least at least a minority uh, share uh, of the future joint venture. Is it better? Sorry, no. one 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 question more. Tell me exactly in one sentence for what do you need the money? We need the money uh, to keep the control of the joint venture. We will build with, with industrial partners uh, to accelerate uh, drastically uh, our uh, uh, production development. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think it's my turn. Uh, one question first How much money are you asking for? So we, we are we are asking. Uh, in fact, this will be a continuous uh, continuous development. Uh, so to, uh, to to build the company, our our first uh, uh, first target is around one thousand uh, one thousand ton per year, and uh, so we, we need uh, between uh, yeah five and uh, five and fifteen millions according to the to to the mixed. Uh, we are put in place to finance uh, the plant. So it will be, it won't be only equity but also uh, debt. And, uh, and according to the uh, to the different uh, proportion of uh, debt and equity, uh, it will be between five and uh, fifteen. And uh, on uh, five to ten years, uh, we need up to fifty millions. Okay. Let's start with five to, to be clearly. Let's start with five and uh, and the possibility to go up to fifty to follow up the market growth. 
you know the battery business is uh, uh, there is a very strong ramp up in this uh, market. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one question more is, and what's the enterprise valuation of the company for those five million euros? Um, so, in fact, it's a question we never answer quickly. Uh, I just can say that uh, our shareholders have put uh, around 10 million euros uh, in the in all the story of the company, so for, uh, since uh, 2010. And uh, so they are doing the same business as, as you, so you can imagine their expectations. Okay. Well, I pass the turn to Unai. Um, hello, can you hear me, Jean-Francois? Perfect. Yes, I will appreciate very straightforward answers. No ideas, okay? <laughs> Please. So, it is a 5 million investment with a company valuation that we don't know to scale up production of 1,000 ton per year for, to, for um, additives for batteries. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. What is the current cap table of the company? Who are the owners? The people that has invested in you and how much that they have invested, although you have already said. Okay. So the first investor is an investment fund. Omnes Capital, I can say it, is public. So they have 28%. Second one is uh, coming from CEA. So that investment fund from CEA, they have uh, 12%. It's the third one. Uh, second one is a family office with 18%. Per 18%. I don't give the name because uh, you don't know them. And after, we have uh, plenty of uh, business angels and uh, so with deep pockets and, uh, and family offices and uh, management. Uh, Yes, with the different three founders and uh, present management is uh, around 8%. The man management is 8%? Yes. Okay. And can you confirm my uh, the sentence before? So you need the 5 million for evaluation that we don't know to build a 1,000 ton per year plant based on your current pilot plant. So the technology to scale it up to cope with battery production. Yeah. Yes, in fact, we, it's not a pilot plant, so we will multiply the present plant, so there, there is no scale-up risk. Uh, so we will multiply the present plant, which is, we don't consider it a pilot plant because we produce okay. industrial quantities for the semiconductor according uh, to the copy exact process, uh, which is a controlling process where you must be, uh, you must have a very high uh, produce, production quality. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I guess it's my turn now. Um, you mentioned that you are considering also a mix of equity and debt. Can you yes. be a little bit more clear and, uh, you know, sort of the split? If you're looking at 5 million, what sort of split are you looking at between equity and debt? Well, let's say uh, if you just want a short figure, a short answer uh, with a, a rough figure, so I would say 50 50 could be a good idea. In fact, our partner is a big uh, Japanese group, the first one to, to build a plant in, in, in Asia, and uh, they okay. have banks in their, in, in their group. And, uh, and so uh, it's not our decision. So I think they are more competent than us uh, to define what is the best solution uh, and the best share of uh, debt and equity. Let's say 50-50 if you want uh, to get an idea. Okay, but you're looking for money from, you know, um, someone like us who has local, of course, interests, and you're going to build this outside, outside of Europe, in Japan? Yes, for Is instance. This what yeah, you're after? Not in Japan, but close to Japan, yes. Yeah. Close to Japan, but outside of uh, our country. Yeah, yeah, sure. yes. um, so what sort of therefore wealth is going to be there for the region? What sort of employment numbers, new ones, are we looking at? In, uh, in Europe, you mean? Yes. Uh, it's, it's not our target. 
So in, in fact, so the, the first the first plant, there are two big markets. So I, I exclude Americas uh, where it's a specific okay. situation. So there are two markets we want to serve, Asia and Europe. So the first okay. plant, and so it's a Japanese partner, and uh, with this we want to serve the uh, Asian market. And we have also plans to uh, to build a big plant in Europe, in a in a low uh, kilowatt cost uh, country. Uh, to serve uh, the, the numerous projects uh, which are going out now uh, from Scandinavia to uh, to to, uh, to uh, Central Europe. Yeah. And this Japanese partner is investing how much? And therefore, how much are you also going to be diluted at the end? Uh, so, so the Japanese partner, in fact, the, the idea is to, to, to build a joint venture with uh, this partner and uh, one of the shareholders uh -huh will be nanomakers, our company. And the investment okay, I propose but, is to is uh -huh. an investment in nanomakers, not not in the so there is a kind okay. of leverage effect. So so the investment is in nanomakers and then nanomakers will own how much of the a minority of the let's say one third, one third let's say one venture. third to, to have at least a minority uh, one third yes control minority okay so you're investing because, because you're asking we, us to we, we invest in a company which will then only have one third Yes, we don't want to be just a license, licensor. Okay, we we want to control the uh -huh. operations and to control the development also, and even the sales and marketing and so on. And so we want to have some control of the operation of the joint venture. For this reason, we need to have at least a minority. Okay, and did um, and therefore, how much money are they putting in? You said. And so, uh, so they will put uh, two thirds and, and us one third. Two thirds. Okay, so Rough if you're figure, after yeah. five, they're putting ten. Sure. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 I can pass so, it on back to Martin or to the others. Yes. <laughs> so we have five minutes more, short questions or answers. So Martin, your turn. Okay. Uh, many questions, but I fully understand what you're up to, uh, and I understand the concept you're proposing. That's nothing new. I think two observations which a little bit would trigger that we are not investing in you. The first observation is you said you have shareholders, they're all big, rich pockets. So I would expect from what you told me and how you presented yourself, your existing shareholders are well capable in putting 5 million into your company if everything is true what you're saying. So why you're looking for a new investor is not 100% clear to me because your existing shareholders should invest you, my opinion. The second thing is, and I think this is where we really have some difficulties. You have no experience in running any plant. You will not operate the plant. You are more or less a kind of consultancy company having a blueprint. So somebody on the ground must build the plant. Somebody on the ground must operate the plant. And somebody on the ground must be, you know, in a way guaranteeing the yield because you have no experience of mass production whatsoever. You have very specific boutique, high, low volume, high quality, everything laboratory, but you have no clue about mass production. Therefore, your partners are best suited to take this risk. So the second question is why are you not, you know, why does your business model want you to control something where you're not the best risk taker? And therefore, the value you can generate on this might not be high enough to really get interested. I like the idea you have, but I think you need to work on the funding structure and which part takes which risk and where do you need to contribute. But just to hold 30% of something which is out of your control for the sake of controlling it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Thanks. Show your answer or? Just take uh, this as a comment. Yes, this is not a good example of short question, but uh, <laughs> do you want to answer any of their comments? Yes, his yes comments? sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure. In, in fact, the shareholders, so shareholders, they can put the five millions, so we, we can get it. But after, they will not be able to follow up, to follow us up to 50 millions. So that's just a long term story. Short term, yes, they can do it, but long term, they cannot. For the experience, uh, so I don't agree. As I said, so we have a, a very uh, high quality experience in uh, in uh, the plant management and the supply for the semiconductor industry, and uh, which is a uh, very high, uh, very high quality. And uh, and after, so as I said, we want to keep the, the control of the sales and marketing, 
And what, what I have not said is that uh, so the quality of our product, thanks to the uh, excellence of the process, uh, is, uh, is the highest quality. So uh, our product is much better uh, th than the, the competitors wants. That's why we have no competitor in the semiconductor industry. And, uh, and we produce industrial quantity. Okay, uh, we are not in the in, in the in the steel uh, in the steel business, so uh, we are not uh, producing uh, hundreds of tons or thousands of tons. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, but so it's uh, significant uh, as a quantity. In fact, we uh, for nano uh, nano producer we uh, we produce a big big quantities. Yeah. Thank you. But okay, uh, so we need some more time to, okay. to explain you what is the uh, nano business. Yeah, uh, yes. my turn. Jose. So in when I prepared the role play, I I said to myself that I was going to be the head of investment of Citic Ventures, a Chinese uh, big fund, and I was able to do the follow up. But I have one question. I don't know the benefit for me to invest in your company. So you can invest in the joint venture instead of me investing in the final joint venture. What's the what's the advantage for me? But you simply will not have the opportunity to invest in the joint venture because in the, in the joint venture, so the industrial mm -hmm. capacity and the financial power is in the hands of our partner, and the technology, uh, as I said, the highest quality technology is in our hands. So there is no room for for other investors in the joint venture. And uh, and in fact, if you are just an investor, if you speak about, if you think about the control, it's much cheaper for you to invest in nanomakers than to invest in the joint venture, assuming that it could be possible, which is not the case. So it's you you just have to invest one third to control something, uh, which is very good. And so we have already built. Uh, okay, Unai. Story. Sorry. Unai. Jean Francois, yeah. uh, it is one question, but it's, uh, it is mixed. It is five answers. Okay. Um, current turnover, please. Uh, two millions. Turnover in five year time. Uh, so the joint venture turnover or our. Else? Turnover in five year time. Of okay, the group with. Uh, uh, so 100 millions with the uh, joint venture. Uh, that's uh, the current business. Battery business, current turnover. So, uh, to, to, yes. Not, um, I ask current business, which is as a, uh, well, as is, a special uh, chemical for your current applications. So the product yes. that you have already patented is 2 million. Yes. In a five year time, what will be the turnover of that business? Of that business, uh, between six and ten. Six. Okay. We, we, battery uh, business. Current turnover. Like, yeah. Current turnover uh, of battery business. Very small. Okay. What will be in five year time? A hundred well, million. Oh, yeah. And okay. this will be most of the 100, 100 million, yes. A hundred million. Okay. Is battery technology already proved? We, we are at the scaling up uh, as a qualified uh, final qualification. It is proof. Uh, it is proof. It, it is proof. Has been used in already in batteries, or is only being tested in te uh, test uh, uh, bench. Uh, yes, it's it's uh, just tested in prototypes in batteries, but in, in prototypes there is no mass production of the okay of the battery. So you. You are asking five million euros for to build a hundred million euros for a technology which is only being tested. Is that correct? Mm, yes, something like that. It's okay. a bit more complex. Thank you, but, okay. uh, Thank you Nai. Last question, Angel. Okay, no, my question would be: Would you be willing to take uh, um, the the money if we link it to employment in the region? So that would be the strings attached, that instead of doing this in Japan, you do it closer to home. Uh, okay, we'll negotiate. We'll make uh, one plant in Japan and one plant in Europe. 
And okay, I say I answer. And yes. therefore, how much? Uh, how? Okay, so you would be willing. So your your other partners will force you to do it all in Japan. Are you sure about this? Uh, sorry, I've lost you. Okay, I said your other partners, they will not force you to do this only in no, Japan. No, because, so in fact, we, we need to produce close to our customers. And customers will have in Asia and in Europe. Okay, all right. So you would and be so we, we, we need to, to plan. There, there, is no, there is no choice. And uh, the technology okay. is the same for us and so on. Yeah, sorry, so stop here. Yeah. Good. Okay. So just to close, because we passed our time. Uh, my question to uh, the investors is anyone Jim has interested in investing? Jim, can you still hear us? Yes, I can. Yes. Jim, He's no, there, no, not John. Can you still hear us, Jim? <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm here. I can hear you. Yeah. I cannot well, hear Jim. That's uh, anyway. We I think he dropped. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Fun. Uh, is is any one of you interested in, in investing in Jean Francois' business? Angel, are you interested? Or you well, pass? We would need to discuss uh, terms for the local growth, but yes, we would be willing to start discussions. Okay. Unai, would you be interested in further discussions or not? Um, I would love to enter into further discussions. Uh, I am uh, I'm playing the role, for example, as, as uh, Evonik New Ventures. Uh, we have 100 million to invest in new companies. Your product fits perfectly in our current uh, specialty chemicals portfolio. We like the 6 million business in five year time. We are not really sure. And so we will be willing to invest and to take out all of your current shareholders and to take a majority position in the company keeping you all, the people uh, that are running the company, uh, inside, of course. And for the battery business, we need to see more uh, details. We are afraid of uh, experiments. We want facts. We want to be sure that you can reach 100 million and the, uh, that the, this chemical, specialty chemical, that additive can it really improve and can be uh, industrialized in, in the in its of interest for the battery builders. Okay, so we are not interested currently in that business, just in the uh, in the in your current uh, business. Okay, so taking majority stake in the company and getting all your current shareholders out. Okay, okay. Martin, and if you can. I'm talking me, about Hermann Hauser Arm. We like the first part of the storyline, which is, you know, the semiconductor. This is where we come from. We believe in asset light. We don't believe in plants. We don't believe in production facilities. We believe in asset light business models. But we understand that you're not looking for money in this business because it's high profitable. You have everything under control. You want to expand into a field of battery. We believe it's a mass market. We understand the material side to your value proposition but it's a capacity game you're playing at the end of the day. Can you provide enough capacity for Samsung or any other big battery, even you know, for, for Tesla? So we don't believe that you have big chances in this business without the right industrial partners. We would need to understand your industrial partners and we would need to negotiate directly with them because you are just a technology provider. You're not the, 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 the driver of the force. So we like to talk to the technology partners rather than to you. Okay, thank you. In my case, assuming that I'm the uh, Chinese VC, I was very interested, but I'm a bit disappointed <coughs> with with the the financial product. So I will pass this time. Okay, so I think Jasper, we are done with uh, Jean Francois, and yeah. uh, we yeah. probably we should we should move to the next pitch. Thank you very much, Jean Francois. Okay, thanks a lot for your. Comments. Bye. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, thank you, Jean Francois. It's always a bit of a, a hassle, of course, to get these financial guys on your side, but uh, I think something is happening a bit. Um, now, unfortunately, our dear Celine dropped out. I'm trying to email her. She says, I can't come back. Um, but now I see in the chat that Ditton Leroy can see her. 
So I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm I'm lost for the for a few seconds. I... Okay, uh, probably. Oops, we lost uh, Jean Francois. I'm not sure if he's ah. still there. In the meantime, we we could give them yeah, we could give him ah, some feedback. Ah, Jean Francois. Again. Yeah. There he is. Okay. If it, so if... Le, le, let's do something, Jasper. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can. The role play has finished, but while uh, uh, Celine uh, joins, we can have a talk with with Jean Francois. That's if a you great agree. idea, Jose. That's a great idea. Okay. Okay. So Jean Francois, le le let me start in a second. Okay. So <laughs> just I'm glad as you're feedback. Back. Just as feedback. Uh, I think your financial product should be much much clearer. Than you presented. I think your technology sounds fantastic, but your financial product is not clear enough. And we spent a lot of time just clarifying basic concepts that should be in your presentation. So my first advice should be if you are in front of some investors, whoever they are, whatever their profile uh, are, let's say your financial product must be clear. That's my comment. Yes, it's okay. it's also Unai. the same for me. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, Angel. It was only because Unai. But you, you can finish, Angel, and then Unai. Okay, sorry. So, so I was just gonna say the say the same like you. So, Jean Francois, um, do your research. Of course, this time you had four different hats, so it was difficult. But every time you go to a different investor, do a little bit your research about them. And try to say things which, which you know, will go to what they like. And I also want, um, agree that it was a little bit confusing for us to really understand that also there was kind of this scaffolding of different uh, entities. So we only got through that by by digging um, and sort of, you know, it, it's better if you are upfront and you explain. And you have very clear how much money you want, what you're willing to give, what mm -hmm. percentage for that, and your valuation. It cannot be that you don't have a valuation. Um, this is uh, like one of the most basic things. Okay, but valuation, you, you know uh, how many you have put and uh, what is your return you're expecting. You, you know the multiple. And, uh, so the but multiple put something, you know. And and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, no, I, I understand valuation. I, I note it, yeah. Calculation, but if, if you if you don't okay, put, um, Jean Francois, just a couple of tips. I, I totally agree. I think the investment thesis ha should be there. So, what what is the money? What is the value? What are you, are we going to get from from that uh, money that we put in? And what do you want to do with that money? So it, it you have to go clear uh, on on that. And, and that's, I think we have spent a lot of time trying to understand the, the business model, which I think you have many, many, uh, like many plans going on uh, in parallel. You, you have like building new plans with joint venture. You have like a, a cap table with industrial uh, partners already inside your, uh, the, the, uh, your company. You want to be uh, leading the company with one business, but then building up the new business and so it was, I think you have to be really straightforward on stick to one opportunity, one, one investment thesis and, and, and provide straightforward answers quick to the, to the, to the questions. Okay, thank you. Martin, and then yeah, Jan Francia will I, give you the floor to... I have a little bit questions. different observation. I think you have a great storyline to tell. You have great assets because there's not a lot of companies with your storyline who has got a profitable business income stream. You're playing too much uh, a kind of vision future while you have got good assets at your hand to play. So I think the storyline is great. You need to tell it slightly different, but it can work. I think where you really need to be careful is what kind of risk should be taken by whom. Project financing is not your turf. You are not a project financing company and they are specialists in project financing and this is not what you should put on. Uh, your turf is that you need capital at the holding to expand and that you will have pilots in many different locations where you want to be you know, stakeholder in. So I think what you're playing at the moment is 
be aware what kind of role the holding plays and what is your risk you take and what you are not. Because you will not build the plant, you will not operate the plant, you will not be supply demand marketing what you are as a technology provider at the end of the day. And you need to be clear that everybody understands this and why you need the money in the holding. Yeah, if, if I can comment and speak frankly, in fact, uh, so till uh, last year, our plan was just the battery business. But uh, so now we are developing a new application in the semiconductor. And, uh, and in fact, which is uh, so we can expand the business in the semiconductor and multiply it by uh, by five to ten. And uh, so we are already uh, at break even and we can earn a lot of money in the semiconductor. And so I'm trying to uh, to to attract your attention uh, both on the on the second half leg uh, semiconductor and the battery. Uh, maybe I, sh I should uh, choose one of them. Yeah? Uh, and so that's maybe why it's uh, it's confusing. So I didn't speak. Uh, I was expecting some uh, some questions on the on the second half leg of the semiconductor, which is uh, still under development. Uh, okay, maybe I should uh, I should focus. I have two different uh, decks, uh, one for the battery and, uh, and the joint venture and all this story, and uh, and the other one for the semiconductor. Okay, Celine came, so I should give the floor. No, no, I, I saw Not her. Yet. Yeah, yeah, me too. But uh, she's not finally here. So, well, yes, the so point. I, yeah, but I, uh, if, yes. in the case, if I, if I can, add, uh, if I can add one, one last uh, comment uh, on the cap table itself. It is risky also that you have a, a very low uh, percentage of the company itself. I mean, you have been diluted a lot, and so at the end of the day, if somebody is in, also you will be. You will be just swept uh, away. I mean, if I understood well, so that is something also to take into account. That. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm having an issue to turn off the uh, to join the webinar. I'm a presenter. I have to present now. I think she's talking to somebody um, to provide help. Please go on, guys. Um, we can you hear me? one or two minutes. Yes, I, we can hear you, Celine. Yeah, uh, I can hear them now. Oh, it's okay. I think I, ju I just keep off the, the camera and uh, that should be okay. Really? Can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll move that. I'll ask. Th thanks for your help. Yeah, I was with the help desk. I see, since my camera won't come on, so I will just, uh, uh, you will just hear me then. <laughs> so, sorry. Well, um, maybe okay. i can offer to show your slides yes and every time you want another slide I, you say next slide i will uh, see what i can do okay thank you everybody bye bye thank you very much jean francois are you leaving jean francois you can listen in if you want to huh uh thanks yeah, okay thanks. okay I, I will listen yes okay but I, I will turn off my camera so I, i'm not necessarily for um, the presentation here we have okay so this is slide nine and this is the first slide with the let's say with the skeleton running yes <laughs> good well i'm glad you're back celine we have yeah, i'm um, sorry for the delay yeah <laughs> do you hear echo i'm glad i'm glad that you that you made it and uh let's listen to your speech thank you fire away mm -hmm. so hey i'm i'm celine thank you for giving me the party to be speech today. Uh, I'm the CEO of NoraCare. We joined the EIC community twice with the SM instrument phase one and phase two. Our aim at NoraCare is to develop next generation implants for true bone regeneration. Our purpose is, is to provide a better and longer active life for all patients after traumatic surgery due to bone injury. Are you bone yeah. disease, sport injuries occur more and more frequently. Some solutions on the market on the left hand side can repair them but do not regenerate the bone. So that's the previous slide. 
sorry, yes. this one? Yes, that's the, that's the good one. Okay, sorry, yeah. The current solutions, they also have side effects. For example, with metallic implants, patients keep a foreign ma material in their body. And with other implants, the bone is weak and fragile for life. There is no bone regeneration. Those images on the right hand side are an example of the potential of our technology based on our unique biomaterial made of polymer and bioactive glass, which has the incredible capacity to regenerate the bone. Our first product on the market, a screw for the knee, uh, validated our technology and its benefits with the first uh, successful clinical study. study. With our solution, the very own bone of the patient is regenerated, as seen in purple on the right-hand side. Or, in other words, the skeleton is rebooted. Next slide, slide please. Why true bone regeneration is a breakthrough advancement and provide a real competitive advantage? First, for the patients. It means reduced pain, less inflammation, faster healing, and better recovery. For the healthcare providers as well, it means less reoperations and lower hospitalization costs. For example, cost of reoperation in Europe are 2 billion euro each year. With our solution, the reoperation rate goes from 20 to 4% in our clinical study. And also for the sales team and distributors worldwide, the reboot solution will be a compelling offer. They will have a complete and disruptive solution in their portfolio to convince the surgeons. Next slide, please. Reboot total world market is big and global. In 2018, it reached 7.6 billion euro. Our addressable market is evaluated 1.7 billion euro and it's composed of the biabsorbable market as well a part of converted users of non-absorbable implants. Within four years, we intend to take about 2% of this market with 33 million revenue, which is only a starting point. Next slide, please. We are going to create a unique market with the biocomposite made of bioactive glass. And uh, in, in, uh, regarding the competitive landscape, we will completely shift it. As of today, it's fully dominated by US companies. But with the reboot solutions, there will be uh, the apparition of a key player from Europe. And in the long term, there will be a progressive disappearance of the metallic implant and the growth of regenerative solutions following the reboot trend. Next slide, please. Now we need a good commercialization plan to achieve all this. This is not new to us. On the left hand side, you see we already have several products on the market, so we have a good knowledge. Um, but for the reboot solution, our target is to start first with the sh shoulder solutions, which is an excellent entry point to market knee and then small joint implant. And bone fractures implant will come third. In France, we will continue to sell directly to private and public hospitals in order to keep a direct link with surgeons for clinical knowledge and continuous improvements of our products. And, uh, uh, worldwide, we will continue to expand our global network uh, with this compelling offer. As of today, we are working in 15 countries. Tomorrow, our target is 60 distributors in, uh, uh, with the USA in target. Of course, somebody needs to pay for those products. We have already analyzed the reimbursement process and all reboot implants will be reimbursed through public and private insurances. Next slide, please. So, what does it mean for NOACA in terms of financial projections? In uh, 2020, we reached the brick even with the current structure, but our aim is to go many steps further. So, we have an investment plan from 2020 to 2024, which is the scale up. We aim at achieving uh, net free cash flow by 2021, multiply by five the staff, multiply by 10, the manufacturing capability by 2024 in order to reach a revenue of uh, 33 million euro and an EBITDA of 13 million euro. To do so, we need an investment of 6.4 million euro split between product development, manufacturing scale up, 
marketing and marketing and sales. In terms of uh, source of finances, we have already secured 3.4 million euro last year through the uh, SMA instrument phase two. So we uh, achieved 2.5 million euro with the EU contribution and we secured 0 0.9 million from our current uh, shareholders. The next step, 2020-2024, is to raise 3 million euro both uh, in uh, bank loans or fundraising. Uh, next slide, please. As of today, we are uh, uh, 23 people. We are young but extremely dynamic and expert covering the full range of competencies from research, manufacturing, operations, uh, marketing and sales. We are supported by a strong advisory board composed of surgeons, investors, scientific leaders and healthcare professionals. All of us are passionate by our activity and proud to lead to lead the revolution in bone regeneration. Next slide, please. And so now let's all reboot your bones. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Celine. I'm glad you, in the end, you managed to make it. Um, I think we have no longer Martin on camera, or do we? Has I am. he come back? Ah, there I he is. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah. sorry. sorry. Okay. Good. So, so, fire away, guys. We have a hard stop. We have a hard stop. So, 30 seconds question, one minute answer. I think in this speech, I was the first one. So, uh, Celine, I'm uh, the head of investment of Biomed Partners. Uh, what's the exit strategy that you think for me? Can, can you? The, so, the. The exit, uh, uh, if you invest as a Biomet? Yes, exactly. Imagine that you invest in your company as Biomet. What's the exit strategy for me? So the, the exit st strategy, uh, I, I think I think for, for such a company as such as Biomet, the exit, the, there is no exit strategy. The exit strategy, the, the end, end strategy is that you uh, acquire uh, the company. 100 uh, percent so you get uh, all its uh, patent portfolio capabilities and uh, range of products and would you be able to sell the whole company in the future to me you mean if i if if i have uh, uh, if i can do that by myself decide that by myself i'm not sure you are the ceo i'm pro I'm probably um, you are representing the board Yes, I'm, you're right. And uh, one uh, important point is that the company is 100% uh, owned by uh, myself, my two brothers, and my father. Well, you didn't answer my question. But anyway, Unai, please. I think you were the second. OK. Um, what is the you are asking for three million if i understood well what is the company valuation at the moment and uh, what are the, the cap table you already said but you mentioned that there are investors in so can you clarify so in regards of the valuation i think uh, we can uh, get into a um, i think uh, i think of what is the valuation the valuation yes this is something I discuss uh, in private with the investors. We show a high mark of interest, and uh, I think okay. we can get in contact make, afterwards about that. Make up, make up a number. Don't, don't make up a number, please. This just, is a role just, play. Just to make, just to make some uh, numbers. So just to just to calculate the percentage. Okay, make up a number. If I make up a number, I say fifty. Okay, fifty million five zero. Yes. Thank you. So, Angel. So, if I understood correctly, you said you're now 23 people. Multiply that by five. So, so in four years, you're going to be 115? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. And uh, therefore, um, if you are basically a family business, okay, um, how are you going to take care of this large expansion? Uh, what sort of 
risk uh, mitigation did you put in place? How, how will you manage to scale up so quickly and, and still manage it? Well, well uh, I think there is no link between uh, family management and expansion of the business. Of the business. I have uh, highly skilled uh, people in the team, uh, either in operations, uh, research and innovation, um, manufacturing and um, uh, regulatory affairs, as well as um, uh, marketing and sales. So uh, our, our aim is to, to reach those uh, extra uh, 3 million euros uh, in order to really expand the, the sales and marketing within those four years. And will there be an employee stock options plan, an ESOP? There, there, there will be, yes. It's not in place this yet, but uh, it, there will be. Okay, I can pass it on. Martin. Happy. Uh, Celine, happy. I like your story. I know your business. Two questions. Your CE certification is 13845. So what kind of CE certification? When do you want FDA approval? Because US is the biggest market for you. And what kind of distribution channels you're using today? What you are still missing? So we are, you're correct, we are CE certification, uh, 13485, and we are now in the process of uh, uh, submitting uh, 510K in the US. Uh, our target is to get our first, our first uh, FDA approval uh, in 2022. Uh, and um, the distribution our, channel our is network using distribution today, today yeah. well, in France, we go direct. Uh, we sell directly to hospitals, private and public. We are regi registered in uh, more than 50 hospitals. And worldwide, we go through uh, specialized distributors uh, who um, are uh, selling a complete range of orthopedic implants, for example, prosthesis, spinal implants, and our range of products are fully complement complementary to, to, to theirs. I understand. Thanks. Okay, so second round of questions. Um, um, I understand, Celine, that you are raising this kind of Series A of 3 million euros. When you finish your business plan with these 3 million euros, will you need more money? Will you raise a Series B? Or, or what, will, what will you do? Yes, definitely. After the Series A, there will be a Series, series B because uh, beside this uh, develop product and under development, I've shown you, we all, also have uh, several others in stock, still uh, in the orthopedic market, but uh, very well complementary to the range we already have or is currently in development. Um, so there will be a Series B. The aim would be something in, 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 around 20, 2028, 20, 20, 2030. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Unai. Um, can you go a little bit? Um, I will uh, just drop off some, some ideas that I, uh, if you could please answer quickly, okay? Uh, relating the, the technology, uh, it is something which is already proof. And is there any risks uh, regarding uh, product recall? Uh, is there any? Uh, is it? I, I believe there is is a product that is already been in use. Uh, uh, is it something that is certified? As you say, that you are looking for uh, for regulatory approval in in the states. Uh, how so it's something that is currently being sold is currently being used what is the performance what is the advantage along uh, the current uh, status uh, or state of the art and is it something that solves better for let's say uh, hospitals uh, it reduces costs or improves uh, performance what is the the usp of the technology Okay, so yes, the product are already on the market. So we have um, one range of product in the, on the market, the screw for the necrochet ligament. Uh, this uh, implant has been, has de we have demonstrated the value proposition of this implant through a clinical study. And uh, the, 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 the uh, sorry. 
The value proposition, as I mentioned before, is really on the long term, either for the patients or the surgeons. The idea is to uh, keep the same type of surgery as the surgeons are doing today, especially in arthroscopy. The surgery is very well uh, done, but the, what we, the, the value we, we bring is for the long term. Reduced pain, less inflammation, uh, and uh, less the risk of re reparation. So, in terms of the long-term benefits, there is benefit for the patients as well as for the healthcare professionals. Okay, so based on that, is that this new product is based, so the, your current patent, your current IP protection is related to the product or is related to the, the materials used? Yes. So, okay. Both the, 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 the process, the biomaterial, and as well the product. Okay. Okay, thank you. So. Martin, I sorry, okay. Angel, Angel, sorry. Don't worry. Um, so very briefly, so what runway um, do you have at the moment, and basically what what's your cash burn per month? So, sorry, what, what's my revenue? No runway. Uh, how much time before you run out of money? Ah yes. Um, uh, now we, we we are right in the in the beginning of the the uh, 3.4 million euro uh, we got from last year. So we would run out of money, I would say, in 20 something like yeah, 2024. Okay, that's interesting. But you're still ra raising the three million now. You still need no, them. The three million will be raised in 2022. 2022. Okay. Martin, you are on mute. Sure. Uh, you have can you four hear me? minutes left, guys. Yes. There is yep. four minutes okay. left. Celine, I think, you know, for my uh, last question, and then, you know, we go to the, to the feedback. My understanding is that you need a strategic partner at the moment to expand and get access to the surgeries. Who are the decision maker? Is it the surgery who can order or is it the hospital you need to convince that orders your product? Who would be the decision maker? Uh, both, I would say. You need to convince the, the surgeons because that's the end user, but you need also to convince the pharmacy and the procurers of the hospitals or clinic. Yeah. And the pricing you're proposing to them at the moment, do you fear any, or do you expect any down drop on the pricing or is the hospital happy with the, the pricing you provide to them? Uh, at, the, at the moment, so we manage to uh, provide a premium price. And uh, as we have demonstrated the long-term benefits of the product with that clinical study, um, hospitals and uh, procurers are uh, happy with uh, the price we provide. Thank you. Okay, so just uh, one quick uh, round uh, to say if you would be interested on uh, moving forward with the investment opportunity of Celine. So, Martin, you were the last one. Would you be interested? Okay, then I unmute. Yes, definitely. I think you have a great story. Your pitch is not for funding and financing now. Your, your pitch is more to take awareness and get the people ready when you need the money. So I think you need to position yourself at the moment with the right people. There's enough money out there for your business case. I'm definitely interested and I think you would be an interesting investment case for many of my clients, to be honest. Okay. Uh, Unai? Okay. Uh, as role playing, I'm VP of Smith & Nephew, which I believe you really know that company. We are. We have been watching your technology and your company for quite a while, and we think it fits perfectly in our current portfolio. But I think you are too early. You are small still for us. Okay, you could benefit from our sales structure worldwide, from our uh, support uh, for for the growth of your company. But I think you are still too small. We we will have to go and review. Uh, things related to the IP, uh, things related to the manufacturing and the materials, and, uh, and okay, uh, things related to the manufacturing. And so we want to go uh, <laughs> uh, and keep okay. a close look to you okay, until I'm you doing... are ready for us. <laughs> okay, Thanks, so. So, you know, um, we would be interested to enter into discussions. We would 
need to see if maybe a loan debt would be better so that then you can um, repay it rather than equity. But one would be interested given that you are you are going to be putting wealth in the in the region as a role play. <laughs> as a role play, 50 million enterprise valuation, 3 million euros of funding. I'm not interested, so I pass. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jasper, do you want to close in whatever well, well, seconds you have? Yeah, we, uh, okay, uh, in, on my clock, I have 15 seconds. Um, <laughs> it's such a pity that we cannot see Celine, um, uh, but um, I hope she had um, some learning and some joy, definitely. Uh, joy Thank you, uh, everyone, for the, this great feedback. So next, next time, I will uh, ask for 10 million euro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. Well, we'll think of you because we are going to organize probably this uh, panel session um, at some other occasions again, huh? and uh, therefore uh, we, we'll think back of you uh, again, Celine. So, my dear investor panel, thank you very, very much for um, what you have presented uh, today. We are already now seeing one new person for the next session popping in. Uh, hi, Aurelia. Um, we are actually stepping out at the moment because we've closed our session just at this moment as we speak. I don't know who makes this sound, but um, um, Aurelia, we are going to step out and give the floor to you. Good luck with your new session. And dear team, I will see you again at some occasion. Um, till soon. Bye bye. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Jasper. Bye -bye. Thank you, people. Bye. Bye bye. So we switch off now, huh? Cameras and and microphone. Happy to stay in the session, of course. Why am I not switching off?
hacer con ellos. Bueno, pues, no te preocupes, salió tu samo. Nie możesz się samo, bo jesteśmy my. Ja pójdę z boszu, co ja widzę tam, bo ja znowu widzę to jako uczestnik, znaczy jako... Participant. Yy, tak, mhm. nie jako... Presenter. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Uh, can I, any thumbs up? You can. Excellent. That's great. Listen, Owen O'Neill here, Innovation Radar team lead. I had trouble getting in as a presenter, but I am here delighted to, uh, to get things kicked off for the uh, award ceremony. The commissioner will be joining us later. But in the meantime, I want to just fill you in on uh, what we've been doing today and why we are doing it. So I'm going to start sharing um, uh, my, a screen with you now uh, about, let's see how this goes. Um, so today's, hang on, voila, can you see my slides filling uh, a good portion of your screen? I'm going to work on the assumption that that's a yes because I can't hear anybody. But ladies and gentlemen, today, Innovation Radar Prize Award Ceremony, earlier today, we had the pitching of 12. But I want to quickly just give you, just go over why we are doing this. What is the Innovation Radar? This is our in-house intelligence system about innovations coming out of the framework program and how ready they are for the marketplace and the, the disruptive potential they bring. It, operates along three key dimensions that I want to talk to you briefly about today. One is identifying, supporting, and the third, championing. And by, by identifying, I'm talking about identifying innovative excellence, market potential, disruptive potential, along those, you, what, what's coming out of the program? What is its potential to impact the market? What's its disruptive potential? Now, 
hold on a moment. I don't think like you can see my slides. Would I be right to say that? Not to worry. I'm going to keep going, okay? Because uh, the other thing is raising awareness, having identified what do we do when we know how, how great these innovations are, what their market potential and their disruptive potential. We want to raise awareness through a public-facing platform that we have. Uh, can, I'm just, I can see these slides here. Can we get rid of those slides? And can I... Um, hang on. Screen. Uh, can, I, can I share my slides? Okay. I'm going to share my application window here for the slides right here now. Let's see if this works. Give me a thumbs up if you can know it. I see it's loading. Okay. Okay. Listen, that's good. All right. One moment. And when I go full screen, you can't see. Okay. Okay. We have some gremlins in the house. Not to worry. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm going to have to go through the slides like this. But uh, what I want to show you here is the identifying. It's about identifying its excellence, its market potential, its disruptive potential. It's about raising awareness of this excellence across Europe that was funded in the framework program. And we do that, that through our public facing platforms, browser based at innoradar.eu, and also through our smartphone apps on both the iOS and Android platforms. It's also about supporting this second dimension, supporting EU funded innovators in that vital step from the laboratory to the market. One of the tools we use is dealflow.eu, an EU funded support action that's helping innovators coming from the framework program with innovations of great market potential to make that step from the laboratory to the market. Place. And Dealflow, we're very busy in the last uh, two weeks preparing for the Radar Prize, working with the finalists so that they could hone and perfect their pitch that they delivered to the jury today. Which brings me elegantly to championing. This is the third dimension of the Radar, the Innovation Radar Prize. This is our sixth edition to do this uh, competition, where we seek out the creme de la creme de la creme based on the intelligence Radar is uh, collecting, the creme de la creme of the framework program. And we get them to pitch their innovations and their plans to get them to market, to show how these investments in innovators being distributed by the EU can deliver impact in the wider marketplace and in society. And uh, we have three prize categories this year, tech for society, women-led innovation, and innovative science. In each of these four, each category, we have four finalists. So earlier today, 12 uh, great innovators from around Europe were pitching. And uh, they, this covered the full spectrum of the innovation life cycle from early stage uh, research coming out of the Marie Glodowska Curie Action Programme or the EIC Pathfinder, right through to very close to market actions, such as uh, some of the SME instruments now part of the EIC pilot uh, and everything in between in you know, transport technology, in health technology, and it was the full spectrum. And some of these innovations were really, are really innovative and uh, providing considerable breakthroughs in science and ultimately applications for, uh, for the use of, um, of for, for citizens, for companies, and uh, for other actors. But how do we choose the finalists? It was all thanks to an excellent jury we had in place we have uh, we had drawn from the uh, investment and startup ecosystem. We had uh, Maruna Girtu, Aurelia Islime, and Vanessa Gestettenbauer, who today listened to the 12 pitches and came up with their judgments. And at this point, I, if I'm not mistaken, one of our jury members, Aurelia, is with us and connected. Aurelia, I can see you there. Could I pass the microphone to you? Because I'd like to hear a few words, if you could share with the participants about the experience today and the 12 pitches uh, without revealing who the winners were. But uh, if you could 
Can yes. have a few can words you, from you. Aurelia. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, I was part of the jury today. And on behalf of uh, my two other juries, we wanted to say that this year's competition was incredibly high standard. Um, we were very impressed by all the innovations presented this afternoon. Um, and we really wanted to congratulate each team on the fantastic pitches and efforts. Um, the aim of the Innovation Radar Prizes is to reward future focused and cutting edge innovation with a strong problem solving aid score. And it's, it was really great to see such outstanding talents um, today. It was a very difficult decision to make, um, a lot of very great contestants. Um, so again, congratulations to all the participants for all their hard work. Um, and we will be following your progress and wish you all the best for the future. Excellent, Aurelia. Many, many thanks for that. And uh, so uh, what happens next? There's one thing I'd like to share with you uh, about the Innovation Radar Prize. Ever since we started this prize scheme um, six years ago, we've been partnering with Euronews. And Euronews have, uh, be, uh, will do a program, a four-minute broadcast, with the overall winner, because we have the three category winners, but we also have an overall Grand Prix winner that will be announced shortly. And the overall Grand Prix winner will be featured uh, in a four-minute broadcast uh, by Euronews about their EU-funded innovation, uh, the potential it has to impact in the marketplace, in wider society, and the plans of that innovator to capitalize on that potential. Um, so in the coming weeks, uh, after they've produced the program, it'll be, it'll, you will have a chance to, to broadcast it. And, uh, okay, so, the, uh, so we do keep your eyes peeled. We will be announcing it through the Innovation Radar uh, Twitter feed about when it is broadcast, uh, uh, the handle being at uh, uh, Inno Radar EU, I-N-O-N-O -O Radar EU. And uh, uh, you can also see on the Innovation Radar website the videos of the from videos of the previous broadcasts about previous winners of the Innovation Radar Prize. Now, uh, I see Jean David, you're with us here today, and uh, is the the commissioner? We are expecting the commissioner. Do you know if she is on her way, or if she has been delayed, or has some other priorities? I don't know more than you, Egan. Uh, sorry for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, indeed, she was uh, she was expecting to um, to to join, uh, but uh, maybe um, we could um, we could try to see if we can maybe start according to the um, to the time schedule, because she knows that she has also uh, other session afterwards. I don't know how you want to, to proceed. Well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you will have received the big secret information by email. Yes, you will very shortly. Yes, indeed. Do yes so. indeed. I know. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. So between you and me and Aurelia, we know uh, what the story is with the, with the winners. Um, so, I what I would what I would propose. Um, is that Jean David? Why don't you take the honor of announcing, starting with the category winners? Because we have, if I'm not mistaken, I'm just checking here. We do have uh, three. We have one, two. I'm seeing three people connected from who will be winning uh, uh, the prizes here today. We are missing one. Uh, but look, please. John David, you have the top secret information. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so maybe we can start with uh, the women-led innovation category, Egan. What do you think? I, I think Correct. you can, and uh, you, uh, yes, you can. But uh, the, the the winner of that category is not with us yet. No, is us. So we take uh, the tech for society category. I think that's a good choice. Okay. 
So, uh, so uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to all the finalists. Uh, I mean, uh, all the uh, the various uh, project and innovation were were just amazing. Uh, but on the result uh, of uh, the work of uh, of the jury that you have introduced, uh, Egan, a few minutes ago, the winner of the Tech for Society category is. Hydrogenius, a German SME for revolutionary hydrogen fuel storage system they have developed uh, with an Horizon 2020 funding. So congratulations to them. Yes, and uh, thank you, Jean-David. Now, the, uh, the innovator in question who delivered the compelling pitch today is Ralph Ott, who was connected. I did see him. And then he dropped out, came back in and dropped out. <laughs> it would be nice to have a few words from him, but I do not see him there at the moment. Uh, so I think let's move on to the move to on the, to the next category. To the next category. So the um, innovative science, correct? Yes. Okay. So there are also my warmest congratulations to the various finalists, but uh, there is always a winner. Uh, and the winner is Appentra for a breakthrough technology that opens up new possibilities for parallel computing. So Appentra is from Spain. And you, we're delighted to, I'm delighted to say that Manuel Aranaz from Appentra is with us on video connection. Please, Manuel, turn on your microphone if you'd like to say a few words. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Manuel. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are, I'm really honored in, in receiving this, this award in the name of all my team. And I really, really just can say that for us, the EU funding has been instrumental in completing the, all the previous steps to come to the current stage of the company and to achieve all the goals that we have been able to achieve during this year and that only the starting point to go to market. So. Really an honor to receive it. Thank you so, so much for the hard work behind these prices and the organization. And thank you. I just can say that. Thank you so much. Well done. Aurelia, anything you'd like to add from the jury's perspective for uh, Aparenta and the opportunities they now face? Um, we were very, very impressed. Um, that category was a very tough one. So um, huge well done to all of your team and to the other uh, participants as well. Um, and we really look forward to seeing what you come up to next. Excellent, thank you. Jean-David, uh, the, the women-led innovation category. We, let, me, let me try and recap here now. Uh, did, you, did you announce who it was? No, I didn't. But I see that, in fact, if I understood well, the, the winner is already online. Uh, Correct or no? No, no. I, I'm not. I'm not seeing her. Uh, but Ralph, uh, but uh, Ralph Ott has joined us. Who you did announce as the winner for Tech for Society. Yeah. Ralph, join so, us. Uh, you yes. won the category. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank. You. Thank you very much, and sorry for the technical challenges. Um, uh, the, the Innovation Rater Prize uh, took us today, or brought us today, but I think I overcome these as well now. And yeah, thank you very, very much. We are very delighted and thrilled. And yeah, it's a great honor for us, actually, for Hydrogenius, um, to be on the radar first uh, in the category, and of course, also to win the prize. Thank you very much. Well done, bravo. Um, so, uh, Jean David, there, uh, the uh, we don't have. Could could you announce at least the 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 winner of the women led innovation who is unfortunately not connected? Yes, yes. Um, so the uh, the winner is uh, Magdalena Staniewska. Uh, co-founder of SDS Optics uh, for non-invasive system for diagnostic cancer uh, from Poland. And I'm here. Thank you very much. Ah, excellent. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I, was, I, I was seeing her, in fact. <laughs> why I was excellent. sure that we can do it. Congratulations, <laughs> Magdalena. Thank you very much. 
That's my time. Can I? Yeah, please, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm very uh, grateful, and I want to thank everybody to to invite us to that um, award. And uh, I just uh, want to also thank my team because we are truly teamwork. We are interdisciplinary team, um, and I'm so happy that we can do things which are very useful. That the science is not just going to the drawer. Uh, can we uh, can see the light and uh, can we uh, make into something very special? So we yeah, thank you very much. We were also supported by uh, different funds, different institutions, and it would never happen if uh, we didn't have help of that. So I'm looking into the future where we can scale up our uh, technology and do even more great things. Thank you very much. Yeah. Excellent. Congratulations, Magdalena. Jean David, I see Commissioner Gabrielle. It seems to be connecting to her office because she could make the big announcement of the overall winner if we if she can join us. Indeed. Yeah, I think we can see you now. Apparently, the, the camera is blocked. And apparently, they had also a technical issue. It's disappeared from the screen. John David, you don't know if the commissioner will be joining us. I have, I have the, the feeling that uh, they have some some issues, so maybe okay. uh, take the responsibility to go ahead. Okay. Uh, Excellent. So, uh, so we move to the uh, overall Grand Prix winner again. Correct. Absolutely. Go for it, John David. Uh, so the overall Grand Prix winner is uh, the Roklo University of Science and Technology in Poland uh, for a targeted nanoparticles based cure for breast cancer. And the winner is Dr. Joanna Bauer. Congratulations. Turn on your microphone, Joanna. Well done. Yes, thank you. I, I just can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm delighted, but now I have to tell about my, uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Nana Saheb Torat, who was actually the Marie Curie Fellow in my group, and we were working together. So he is co winner, and uh, I'm really, really de delighted. The, the, we had two fantastic years, and we were, we were working on the completely groundbreaking technology, which has the potential to save lives, uh, not only women, but as well males, because one percent of patients, these are males actually, and, uh, and uh, these uh, patients uh, usually uh, are diagnosed uh, very, uh, at the very end, so it is very difficult to cure them. So we'll be helping and not only women, but we'll be helping as well our male. And I, I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Uh, really, that was two fantastic years. So we had opportunity to cooperate with many, many uh, external uh, co collabor collaborators from uh, Switzerland, from India, from Ireland, from United Kingdom, from South Korea, from uh, United States. We have published two books which uh, I think will promote this nanoteranostic approach ac uh, across the world. We have uh, fantastic publications, many reviews. So I think that we just starting uh, the new trend and we'll, we'll be able to, uh, to uh, press our other colleagues to continue and develop this, this technology. I, I'm really, really del delighted. I just can't believe it.
Well done. Really congratulations, Johanna. So we are coming to the end of, uh, of the session, Ergen, correct? Yes, we are. And even the end of the EIC hopes. Uh, uh, also, also, also a very long journey. But uh, first of all, I'd like to, uh, to thank very, very warmly and to congratulate uh, the, the winner uh, of the prizes, as well as the uh, runners-up. Uh, it was really uh, absolutely fantastic innovations that were presented this year under this sixth edition. Um, uh, I'd like in particular to, to say also, like you did in introduction, Ergen, uh, a few words about the innovation radar. I mean, um, the innovation radar through its uh, expert assessment of uh, research projects and innovative companies is uh, consistently uh, helping the uh, European Innovation Council. Um, it's, uh, it's a very important tool for us. Um, it has already identified almost 600 innovation within just uh, 150 projects only in the Pathfinder portfolio. So you can imagine the potential that you have uh, when we will expand, because this is our objective to expand the use of the innovation radar beyond also uh, a part of the Pathfinder uh, portfolio uh, today. Uh, very interestingly, I mean, three quarter of this, um, uh, of this um, almost 600 innovation are either already market creating or addressing emerging markets. So uh, it's, it also demonstrates that the selection process of the uh, Pathfinder makes sense. And there's a way we are making the evolution of the Pathfinder for the time being, at least, uh, is, uh, is, in, is going in the right direction. Does not mean that we should not continue to improve, certainly not. Uh, we had a number of things where we need to uh, add uh, additional improvement, but this tool is helping us to have a kind of picture on where we are, but also is helping us in order to uh, improve ourselves. So uh, I'd like to, um, to, to thank people that are behind this, uh, this tool, and in particular, Eogen, for, for, the, for the benefits that it brings, not only globally for, for Horizon program, but in particular for the European Innovation Council, as you know, I'm, I'm dealing and I'm leading this, uh, this new initiative. Uh, by the way, uh, allow me uh, also to tell you that if you want to um, read more uh, about all of this uh, and also about more uh, globally uh, deep tech uh, in Europe. Have a look at the recently published uh, Deep Tech Europe EIC Pilot Impact Report 2020. It has just been uh, released. Uh, you can find it uh, in the news section on the EIC Hub on, uh, in this uh, EU RNI days. Uh, and for the first time, you have in a single document the uh, upside part of uh, the EIC, so the um, support to the emergence of radical science, as well as the um, down, down um, part of uh, the EIC, which is relating to the scaling up of companies. So you have a complete picture of the whole journey, uh, identifying a number of uh, interesting uh, ideas or uh, technology or innovation. This brings us indeed at the end of, uh, of uh, the whole three days of the EIC Hub. Uh, I think it was uh, very amazing uh, this period because for the first time we were fully remote uh, due to the very particular uh, situation in which we are living, but everybody is living under this situation. We have to uh, learn a bit about this. The world is changing. Uh, we need to be even more flexible, agile, and adaptable than ever. Uh, and I think that despite a number of small hiccups here and there during the, the last three days, uh, I had the opportunity to participate to a number of sessions, and the sessions were very rich, uh, very uh, profound in terms of exchanges, 
in terms of exchange of experience, uh, in terms of debate also, and uh, and we had also a number of uh, sessions where we were discussing about the future orientation that should be provided in order to stimulate the innovation ecosystem and the technology emergence uh, in Europe. And I would like uh, for all of this uh, to thank all the speakers, uh, all the teams that were behind the organization uh, of this uh, session. I mean, the EIC hub part of the RNI day was the most important part of the RNI days regarding the number of sessions, not less than 29 sessions over uh, over the three days. But even more, I would like to thank also the audience that has participated, that has sent a number of questions that were for uh, that were very interesting in their contents and that will help us also uh, to continue to uh, to improve uh, ourselves. Um, so many thanks to everybody. I hope that it was as uh, interesting for you as it was for us. Uh, and I would like to um, tell you that uh, it's not yet the end of the RNI days, the end of the EIC hub, but not of the RNI days. Uh, you have still a very important session uh, with closing remarks, with the participation uh, of Commissioner Gabriel, but also of uh, Executive Vice President uh, Vestager. So, uh, Please do not hesitate to uh, join this session that will start uh, in uh, in 30 minutes or so. Uh, and I use this opportunity also to uh, um, wish you a very nice end of the day and with a bit of advance, a very nice weekend. Thanks a lot and thanks a lot, Eugen, for this uh, session. And thank you for our speaker. Thank you, Jean-David. Thank you, everybody.